put the spotlight on your city. See those superstars. 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 Hollywood to Hollywood. Hollywood. Girl, you look good. Yeah, they holler, baby. 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 A key modeling, baby. baby. ATL D. I put the spotlight on your city. Carolina Philly. I put the spotlight on your city. Lay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spotlight over the city. I'm your host, Stan Long, a.k.a. Mr. Motivation. And you know who I got to my left, the one and only Terry T-Bomb Long. Give it up, give it up, give it up. Man, we got a lit show today. We got a show for you guys today. Welcome WLVS listeners, or welcome Listen Vision, welcome Facebook uh, Instagram, everybody, man, city to city, welcome uh, Hall Mills Network, everybody in Jersey, Philly, New York, the whole up to, up, upstate, man, we love you guys, thank you for tuning in, we appreciate it, can't wait for this show, the big homie Jay Prince, you already know, we got a show today, we gonna interview, uh, show my live interview, I interviewed him, what, two weeks ago? Yeah, it was about two weeks ago, honey. So I kept it under wraps because I wanted it to be right. Shout out to Jacob the Engineer, always in the building, killing it. Yeah, um, Jacob. And so, and so we got a bomb show. Like I said, we're going to show the live interview. We're going to show it in a little bit. So you guys stay tuned. Um, the whole Hall Mills Network, I have to say salute there to you go. guys. My baby Jeannie Jones, our boo out in L.A. Wow. Shout out to her, Kitty in the City. You She'll be know. back with us next Thursday, you all. It's always the first Thursday of every month. Kitty in the City will be back on with Spotlight Over the City. Oh, you like that? I got bars. Do it again. Uh, Kitty over the city will be no, back with Kitty spot. in the city. Okay, Kitty, Kitty in on over yeah, the, in the city. city. No, 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 it's Kitty in the city. You, Kitty gotta, in you the don't mess up people's brand. You got to say the right thing. Kitty, Kitty in, in the city. The Jeannie city. Jones. Formerly, right here, I think she was on 93 or... 93.9 93, WKYS. Okay, yeah, she was formerly KYS. Yep. And now we are family, and she is killing it out in L.A., so salute to you, Jeannie. We got some big things coming up. We'll be with her next week, like she said. So let's get into it, because we got a big show. Got yes, anything you want to say before we get into it? Oh, I just wanted to say um, we had a, a recap from the weekend. We covered the uh, Greenhouse Festival on Sunday, and um, it was rained out, but we had our camera yeah, crew there, we so we're going to have some nice there. footage for y'all in a couple of days. And uh, Gucci Mane was there even in the rain. So be looking forward for that. You'll find it on our spotlight, all of our pages. So we'll keep y'all updated with that footage in a few days. Anything else this weekend? We well, do? make sure you guys go to our YouTube page and... Uh, um and, and subscribe to our Spotlight Over the City YouTube page, first of all. Also, follow us on Facebook, Spotlight Over the City. Like our page, please. And um, we really have some big things coming up. I'm about to... I'm trying not... <laughs> but anyway, we're going to keep that under wraps for a little bit. Maybe we'll announce it at the end of the show. We do have a winner. Are we, we, we're giving away one of the books today, The Art and Science of Respect by Mr. J. Prince himself. Um, we have a winner. Do but you want to give it away now or you want to keep them waiting? We're going to keep them waiting for keep about 15 waiting. minutes. How about that? Okay. But we do have a winner. Thank yes, you guys on Facebook for participating. Everybody who participated, everybody who likes and shares, everybody who uh, tunes in every week to us, we definitely appreciate you. Shout thank out to you. my daughter Lulu in the building. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. We got to get into it. Let's do it. Let me let me, let me Let's make, do it. Let me make the his, adjustment. You know I can't see. I put my glasses on, on. Y'all. Happy birthday, first of all, Lil Wayne. Oh, Shout shucks. out to him. Lil Wayne got a birthday hey. today, and he's also supposed to be releasing the Carter Five. I don't know that I've seen it. Lulu, is it out? Is that that's coming out right today? Yeah, today. I thought it they was said today. Right? Midnight. Oh, midnight. We gotta stay up. Doubt that, uh -huh. but anyway, happy <laughs> that's dead. Happy yeah. birthday to Lil, to Lil Wayne. Yeah. We definitely appreciate all the music that you uh have brought to the to the uh airwaves, and you have been killing it for years. Didn't know he had even been in the game that long, but yeah, he's getting old. Very long time. He's the OG he, in the he, game he, now. He got in at like twelve or thirteen, right? Was he twelve? Something like that. He wasn't that young though. Yeah. So okay, shout out to him. Happy birthday. We already shout out Jenny Jones. So again, have uh, shout out to her. Um, we got to get right into a Spotlight News. It's sponsored by our big-time sponsor, Horse and Dickies. Mm. Make sure you go and tell them that Spotlight Over the City sent you. They have three locations, and you want to tell them? Well, we got three locations. The, my favorite one is over there on Allentown Road in Suitland. That's the one we go to all the time. But they yeah, got the definitely. original one that's off of 8th Street and Northeast, and I believe they have a location also on 4th Street Northwest. So you got three locations yeah. in the area, and um, we went last week. We probably go at least once a week. And um, let me the tell fish. you something. 
the got the shrimp, the fried shrimp. What did you shrimp. get? Did you remember what you I got? I had some fried shrimp and I had uh, some fish. I had the croaker. So that's the bone yeah, fish. trout. And it, was and it was so cranking. And mum hush puppies. Mm-mm. Yeah, they got some bone. Y'all, gotta they got Y'all they, gotta they, get to. Y'all gotta get there. Tell them Spotlight Over the City sent you. And get you 10% off. That's Make right. Make sure they'll hit that Spotlight Over the City button. Bing. Bling. And it'll be right on your c- receipt. 10% off. Yeah. Make it sound. Bling. <laughs> you, <laughs> you off the chain. You know what? <laughs> so let's get into a Spotlight News. Uh, a Georgia family gets $31 million after a doctor. Now check this out. Brace yourself. This is this is a little painful even to hear. The doctor severed the penis Ugh. of a 18-day-old little oh, boy. Oh no! I got to get that name. The River Riverdale Life Cycle uh, Pediatrics, and it's in Clayton County, right? Man. Clayton County, Georgia. Melissa did it. Her name is Melissa Jones. She was the midwife, and she severed it. And this is not the worst. The worst is they didn't do emergency surgery. They sent the young man home bleeding with his mother. Didn't tell her, right? And so when she found out, she had to do some emergency situations, went to two different doctors, had to go to different states and a whole nine to get the situation corrected. This was crazy. And so the 31 million, just think about it. If you this young man, you're going to have some issues, right? They just got him able to urinate properly um, because they had to you know, reattach or whatever. So they did put it back together. Yeah, finally, after a bunch of different places she had to go. Those people didn't do it, no. Mm. And so the the the, uh, Lord, the, uh, the attorney asked for a hundred million, and end up getting thirty one million. Okay. And so it seems like a lot, but I keep my what you call and you could keep the thirty one million. What you, you keep that. your what bag? I'm gonna need what to you keep call that. It? My what you call it? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna need to keep that intact though. Real talk. Me too. That got, Tell us. <laughs> I'm gonna so, need him to keep that hey, in Jacob, fact too. Hey Jacob. <laughs> well, okay, Jacob. You tell me. Thirty one million in the head gone. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What y'all say? You, what y'all say? Y'all What'd say thirty one million. Hey. Or you Keanu gotta Neal, get what's your, going on, babe? You have to get it. Your what you call it snipped off, or right. you take thirty one million. Thirty one million. Y'all tell us. And then in the top part gone. Yeah. Or, or they can keep the thirty-one million. Yeah, y'all tell us. I'm gonna start. Looking I raise at the my comments. hand. I'm in the line for you can keep it. You can keep the thirty-one million because I'm gonna need that to work. I really do. Yeah. I mean, what's the point of having money? Right. If you ex, you know what, Jacob said. What's the point of having money, <laughs> in the top part gone? <laughs> 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 yeah. Not to make light of the young man. I'm just. This a whole nother subject. But anyway, oh, yes. Goodness. Moving on. Oh, man, this one right here is crazy. The family of uh, Botham, is it Botham Jean? Jean? Botham Jean? Plans to file a federal lawsuit. This is the young man that the, the uh, uh, ex-police officer, Amber uh, Geiger, she, she came into the house thinking that it was her house, allegedly, and um, I really believe that this was a whole nother situation. But anyway, she came into the apartment, uh, shot the young man, thinking that he was an intruder in her apartment when he was actually home, and um, this is this is not the new, but the new party is now she's been fired, and he they're now suing the state of Dallas and also <laughs> the officer for wow. the misconduct. So tell me something. How do you first of all go to the wrong home <laughs> if you're not under drugs of some type or you're inte- uh, inebriated? How do you go to the wrong resident and then just stop right? How do you do that? How do you How do that? that? Yeah, how you help me how, out. I, I, baby, I don't know. What's your theory? I don't have one. That's why I'm asking you because my theory is they were. it was another type of situation. They didn't know each other. They were dating. Something was going on, and he may have some, some or whatever, whatever, and she felt the way and came there. She was off duty, and she came there, and some, I don't think that they were not knowing each other or it wasn't another situation. I, I just don't believe that. Yeah, I think what you're saying sounds about right. I think yeah, it so. sounds crazy. It you sounds know? You a just little, walk into someone's yeah. place, but you live in the building, right? Mm. But you don't know what damn house you live in. Something's so fishy the furniture like didn't make you seem like this. Not my furniture. The front door. <laughs> this not my level. Um, nothing, right? Yeah. <laughs> nah, that Apparently. sounds wild. So anyway, uh, okay. can't bring them back, but I hope they get a big check from that one. That's yeah. crazy. Uh, shout out Meek Mills, one of my favorites now, one of my newfound favorites. He's being honored at the first ever R and B Hip Hop Power Players Award. Right, it's the first one yeah, ever, mate. and he's being honored for his role in um, trying to free prisoners and 
uh, mass incarceration, what they call the criminal uh, injustice system. Do you right. know that I um, took my daughter when she was about 13 to the Meek Mill concert? That's how, you know, that's how I started getting oh, yeah? to know who Meek Mill is. Yes. Who you took, Tyler? I took Tyler, no, just Tyler. I took her to the Meek oh, Mill yeah. concert, and I knew the songs. I was like, hold up, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished? When I, I knew the words. You, was, you Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, I did. I'm high five. You a cool mom. You I like that? that though. Yeah, you gotta stay young. You gotta stay fresh and young. That's why I love you. You stay Aww. fresh and young. Keep me fresh and young. That's what's uh -huh. up. Uh -huh. Don't do that though. That's the one. That's where you mess up. As <laughs> soon as you do that, you screw it all up. Everything I just told you, you just, you know what I'm saying, y'all? You said I was cool. You see what I'm saying? You said I was cool. Everything was going good, and then here she go. <laughs> That's my. Attitude. So anyway, congratulations, Meek, on your award. Daz Dillinger, the, the, the OG Daz. I don't know if y'all remember Daz. You got to be an old head like me to remember Daz Dillinger. But he was part of Snoop and Corrupt. Shout out Corrupt with the Moon Rocks. Not that yeah. I want Moon Rocks, but shout out, shout out to you for the Moon Rocks. Um, man, Daz Dillinger, he's the OG out in Cali. He's since moved to Atlanta, right outside of Atlanta. And, um, well, before I get into it, I'm going to show you this clip. We'll be right back. Spotlight. Yo, this D.A. to the Z. Motherfucking police just stopped me. Asked me about this Kanye West shit. Look how many motherfucking police it is. But luckily, and blessed, I ain't got shit on you, so fuck you. I handle business. You know what I'm saying? You understand, nigga. So, uh, let the smashing and the dashing begin. The dashing. Chris, did you call the police on me? I'm out of here, nigga. Fuck y'all. You hear me? So anyway, welcome back to Spotlight Over the City. What do you think? So this was before his arrest, right? This was he just got arrested, I think, Tuesday, right? Matter of fact, let me just give you the facts. I don't want to just <laughs> Let's not speculate. He was arrested Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday, um, on 13 felony drug uh, charges. Now, mind you, all marijuana, right? 117 grams of marijuana, right? Over an ounce in Georgia area is a felony. Wow. Um, vape pens and um, some drug paraphernalia, papers, this and that, buffoonery. Now, everything that they said in these charges are legal, and right here where I'm sitting, right? Everything. He's getting ready to be facing some serious time. He's going to have to spend a whole bag to get up out of this trouble right here. And this is because he talked some smack. In mm -hmm. my opinion, he talked Kanye. He said F Kanye. This was only like two weeks ago. Yeah, he did. F Kanye, blah, 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 da, 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 da. Next thing you know, the police are at his home, though, right? And he's being arrested. They're in his house. So do you see they was harassing him on the video before the arrest? It's not the day of the arrest. This is prior to. So they out there harassing him, uh, asking him about Kanye. This is what he said. They're asking me about Kanye West. Yep. The hell? The hell? You come and ask me about, and next thing you know, you in my house. So, yeah, that's show you, though. So you make your own judgment call, but you saw the video clip. This is what he was saying prior to the arrest. And he has a $15,000 bail, um, a bond. I'm sorry, that still hasn't been paid. So maybe, it's, maybe well, as of the day, it may be, but. He's sitting awaiting his uh, court date. Somebody only got to pay, what, 1500 of that? Hey, I ain't in that. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he faces 12 counts of possession of a uh, controlled substance. And um, it's totally, this is craziness. So yeah. you're going to disrupt this man's life for some weed, though? Like, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm an advocate. I, I, I really don't understand that. I'm totally confused as how... That can happen. But anyway, we're going to move on because that's a shout out to Daz. Free Daz. Free Daz. <laughs> yeah, Daz Dillinger. Yeah. And shout out to Corrupt once again, the homie. Moving on, Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby has gotten sentenced to three to 10 years, man, at 162 years old. <laughs> I'm so damn How old mad is he? Right back, wait, back up. Back up. What? How old is he? He old as hell. 162. Bill Cosby, at least 135, <laughs> something like that. He was. He was 102 when I was 16. <laughs> I know he was. Hey, yo, I saw his old man ass. Right here. So all I'm simply saying, I'm so mad 
that you feel he was a threat to the community, <laughs> that he had to go to prison, <laughs> and he came see. Well, you know what, though? And Listen. he old. He 165, and he can't see. He, he 165. I thought you said people can't live past 120. He was a session. It's Bill Collins. <laughs> so 135 years old, and he blind, and he in prison. So I'm, I'm, so I guess what I'm trying to say is why? Like, okay, so not to minimize the situation. I don't, I don't know. Allegedly, he whatever he's well, he it's not drugged. allegedly no more because he got convicted. Okay, well he well just well okay. <laughs> allegedly, <laughs> he drugged or whatever, raped and drugged and blah blah blah. So you know that's not good if that's what you did, Bill. And it's and not. So, um, it's I not. really don't condone that, and I think that that's whack. And if you did that, you disgraced your legacy. Um, and so you have because they say you did, and and so the the bad part is. Amber Rose says she hope he die Ooh. once he get out of prison. Amber Rose, that's what she said. Oh, I said, damn, damn. So Amber Rose, wait a minute now. Did he rape her too? I, I'm like, I don't know if he fondled her or or his cousin. I don't know what's <laughs> the hell. So let me talk to Amber. <laughs> so Amber, why are you so bitter that you want him to die? Like, I really don't wish death on nobody. Like, I really don't be with that. So like. Well, maybe one person. But but I be trying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take that back. So anyway, oh, no, no. Right here, <laughs> Allegedly. So what I'm saying is she got so mad that she said she wished death on him after he get out of prison. She want him to be dead. I said, wow, that's heavy. So now, what do you guys think about this Bill Cosby situation? Y'all t- 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 tell me what y'all think. Well... Well, well, I posted you think, something. Ty? I posted something about it earlier today, and I got people on my page saying, you know, hey, if he really did those things to those women, he deserves to be in prison. He has to. He has to pay for his crime, no matter how old he is. Because I said what you said. I'm like y'all. House arrest, maybe. He, he like a hundred years old. Like put man. him on house arrest for five years. Like, That'll kill him. He ain't even got five years. He's 135. Five more years is a wrap. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So all I'm saying is if you put him on house arrest for five years, that's just like killing him almost. So because he can't go nowhere. I mean, you can't, you know, when you old, oh, you can't go nowhere. Maybe, no maybe, maybe chop his thing. No. And no. that be the punishment. Don't do that. No? Don't ever say that. Like, don't mention chopping things. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I'm not going to chop yours. I need it. I'm not going to chop it. <laughs> so let's go to the clip. Hey, we got a clip of Bill Cosby. Let, let you, you guys weigh in now. This is, this is, okay, we'll be right back. Spotlight. This is a very important day. Judgment day has come. He used his acting skills and that endearing uh, TV personality to win over his victims and then keep them silent about what he did to them. So now finally, Bill Cosby has been unmasked and we have seen the real man as he is headed off to prison. I sincerely hope that you suffer now. I cannot forgive the predator and serial rapist that you are. Always have been and always will be. You disgust me in every way. He did not care how old I was. I was young. I was young and innocent. Only 17 years old. Why should he receive mercy just because he is 81? Once that jury said guilty, and then said guilty, and then said guilty to all three charges of aggravated indecent assault, giving women drugs so he can then have no resistance, it is a very serious crime, and the judge spoke of that today. I'm more emotional than I thought I would be, and this is just going to show victims that they can make it through, and that there's justice at the end, and hallelujah. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Spotlight Over the City. So, I mean, you heard what they were saying. There's a lot of allegations, a lot of this, a lot of that. And so, like I said, I don't condone, if he did this, I definitely don't condone it. But do you think he should go to prison at his age blind? 135 years old, can't see. Do you Bae, think why you keep saying, why you putting him as blind already? He's no, he see. is blind. No, he I'm can not see? Blind. No, no. He, he can't see? No, Bill Cosby has. He's it. illegally blind? I don't, I don't I don't know if it's legal or illegal, but he, <laughs> he blind. I know that part. I don't know if it's legal or illegal. You dig what I'm saying? Like, does hey, he have to, to have a, a, a thing? No, nah, he ain't that far gone, but you got to hold on to him. Don't you see when he was going to court, they was like this? 
Come on, I just thought maybe because he was old no, and well, fragile. He, yes, that too. But <laughs> uh, yeah, and so you know, yeah. I, I so I'm gonna just say this: Bill Cosby tried to buy NBC twice. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, mm. 57 year old actor Jeff uh, Jeffrey Owens. You remember him from Bill Cosby, the yeah. little goofball that was uh, the the, the uh, son-in-law. Sandra's husband. Of Bill, Sandra's Alvin. husband. Alvin. Alvin. Yeah. Alvin. 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 Or yeah. <laughs> he was working at Trader Joe's, as you already know. They took a flick of him, tried to humiliate him. Sucker move. I hate that. And so they did that, and it backfired because the homie Tyler Perry stepped up and said, "I'm gonna I'm hand you a couple of scripts and get your job." Yep. Screw that. You don't need to do that. And you, you don't have to be humiliated. You're a legend in this. And so guess what else? Nicki Minaj gave him 25000 And out of humility, he turned around and gave it to the foundation. It's called the, um, the Actors Fund Charity Foundation. And what it is, Earl Hammond uh, was the, the father of the stepfather of Bill Cosby on the show. Um, I don't know. And he passed away. And in honor of him, they have a foundation. And so he gave the 25000 to that foundation which I thought oh, was really I honorable like because when a person been walking at, working at Trader Joe's, they don't have a bag yet. And so, well, he had one, but then, you know, time went by. Yeah, and so things he, happened. Yeah, but so he wasn't, he got up and did what he had to do. My whole thing is now you don't have a lot of money at that point and you take the 25000 that you probably could really need and you gave it to the foundation. That was a yeah, blessing. So I shout out that. to him for that. Shout out and, to him and, for um, that. And to the idiot that took the picture... <laughs> That was a good look because you got him a job and you got him out to create Trader Joe. So, you know, I hope it. Tyler Perry see me carrying my groceries or something. And something like Can you that. act? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. So you could just. You, you, I can act and I can sing. You and I do I, monologue? And I play the flute. All of that. That's not really a talent, playing the flute. <laughs> <laughs> what? A, 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 the flute? A, yes. A black person who could play the flute? What does that have to do with color? Like, I'm just saying, like a black girl, like from the hood, can Where play the flute. Where did you learn how to? Did you? Do you really? You serious? I know how to play the flute. Sorry, cut it out. Do you know how to play the flute? Yes. Where you learn? At Kentland Elementary. They don't even have flutes in Kentland. They did. Kentland. When they had they the school. no damn flutes. <laughs> they don't have no damn flutes in Kentland Elementary. Y'all, I know how to play they, the they flute. They have it used books at Kentland hater. Elementary. How they got a flute? You can't even get a drum at Kentland. And, Oh, I played the flute all up. the time, all my years. Get y'all band together, Ken Lane. Okay. So anyway, Spotlight Shining Star, I have two, and we're going to wrap it up. M one of my favorites today is Tyler Perry. Uh, shout out to him for the move that I just told you he made. So for that move, I granted him Spotlight Shining Star for today. But he has to share it with the homie Eric Reed um, that took the knee the that you guys don't remember him. Because he didn't oh, get the publicity, yeah, right. but he took the knee along with Colin Kaepernick, the homie, Colin. And so he hasn't worked in the NFL either since that damn knee right there. See that right there? Mr. Reed took that knee. Just mm -hmm. them two, mm -hmm. right? And so they slapped him in his head too, but nobody talked about it. But so that's what we do. We spotlight over the city, so we talk about it. Yes, we do. So we're talking about Mr. Eric Reed because he's been picked up by the Panthers, Charlotte Panthers. You know what that tells yeah. me? That Colin Kaepernick is on his way back into the NFL. That's what for it sure. Me. That's what it says. Yeah. So I'll give it about for two sure. more weeks, and you'll hear it on the news. You heard it right here first. It's but spotlight this guy, over the city. Uh, Eric, what is that? He's he's kind of young. Yeah, he's twenty six. Yeah, that's he's not 26. the same situation for Colin Kaepernick. But this is what I want you guys to understand. He's a twenty six year old All Pro safety, right? All Pro, I said. At twenty six, he's a beast. How come he hasn't been in the NFL since Colin Kaepernick? Well, we all I say all know. pro. We know why. Help me out. Why? Yeah. Is it the league? Is it the same NFL? reason why Colin Kaepernick has not been in the league? That damn knee. That knee. <laughs> Shout out yeah. to Nike. Yeah. Shout out to Nike. Shout out to Nike for Big changing the game. Nike. They putting pressure on the NFL. You hear me? When I say they putting pressure, they got them jerseys on all them backs out there, Nike, and them checks is on everybody's back in the NFL, and that contract is still being on it. And that's a that's a smack in the face to the NFL. He putting pressure on the NFL. So now it's they starting to look at it. It's pressure. cheaper. It's a little cheaper to get them back in the league and sever the tie with the buffoonery now. Yeah. Because we losing. Yeah. So Eric Reed was first. Yeah. <laughs> and here come Colin. Shout out to pressure. Colin Kaepernick. <laughs> You um, already know. So anyway. Rev K is on here and she said, Can I sing something and play the flute on this segment? 
please. I don't have a you, flute, but I can sing something for you, Rev K. So if you type me back what you, you want me to sing, I got you covered after this next commercial. I so got you. So they encouraging you to do this. And our, our wonderful artist is she's on our, her way. You also hang in there. She it's been raining in the DMV. It's, it's a rainy, rainy day. Traffic in DC is horrific on a sunny day. So just imagine what it's like on a rainy day. Let's talk to our so, people on Facebook, baby. Yeah, she's she's come. Well, Rev K said she wanted me to sing. No, no, don't do that. So, shout out big homie Jeff. Cheryl, what's up, sis? Hey, Keith, North Carolina. Shout out North Carolina. Shout out Atlanta. Shout out Philly. Shout out Chi-Town. Shout out Ohio. I see you pinning in Ohio. We got people everywhere. Know yeah, that, though. Yeah, everywhere. And so, hey, Jeff, what you think, bro? Jeff Should Bill me Cosby at 135 years old be on house arrest? Or should he just go ahead and go to prison? Or if you're blind and you're 135 in prison, what? I mean, what, man? Come on, help me out. Well, if you're blind and you're 135, then why? Why he can get his thing nipped off because that could be his punishment and then it's over. I mean, then he can just live the rest of his next five lives and he's not going to do nothing anyway if he's 135. Why do you need a penis at 100 years old? Why, why is his punishment cutting off his penis? Because that's, that's what he was using to get himself in trouble. Allegedly. Yeah, so then let him... So Oh, it's official. It's official because he was convicted. Well, so damn, why Bill. can't he just get that off and let let's get that up off of you? Because that's what got you in trouble, and then live the rest of your five lives, five years, like just without one. Why do you need a penis at a hundred years old? One hundred thirty-five. Yeah. You think that would be good? That's not bad. That's not bad. To chop off a man's <laughs> penis. If are you, you are Bill, it, Bay, if you are Bill Cosby's age, why do you still need it? Well, yeah, at one hundred thirty-five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Pops, Curtis Nichols. <laughs> Ask Curtis. Hey, so anyway, we got a bomb show for you guys. Um, we we gonna talk about the giveaway now. Oh, you want you want to talk about the giveaway now? Shout out to Vernon and Felicia. They're getting married on Saturday, y'all. Congratulations to Vernon Williams and Felicia. They're gonna tie the knot on Saturday, and we will be right there. To we watch will. It. So congratulations, congratulations to them too. And I know y'all been slipping it in on the low though, but I ain't gonna tell nobody. I know y'all ain't been being right. You said. I know y'all. I know y'all. You said slipping it in. Y'all been slipping it in on the low. Vernon and Felicia, Vernon and Felicia been Felicia, slipping yeah, it in. Yeah, they couldn't wait. Vernon. I Felicia. think them two tackled each other the first day. When they moved in, that, that joker tackled her. I know he did. He Slip, looked like he did. Slipping it in. Yeah, he's I like on the that. low, though. Yeah, like slipping it in. <laughs> Shout out everybody on Facebook. We're going to show that clip in a minute that Jay Prince, the Blicky. Coming up So we soon, got the interview yeah. with Jay Prince. But first, we got to talk about the giveaway. Someone won. So my wife is going to introduce the winner I'm of the contest. I'm going to introduce the winner. But before I do that, I want to say thank you to every one of you who shared the uh, post like we asked and who shared it with your followers and asked people to watch the show tonight. Thank you very much for supporting us every week. And the prize is this book, James Prince, CEO of Rap A Lot Records. This is a great book. Once you start reading it, I'm telling you, you probably won't be able to put it down. Um, and so the lucky winner is someone who won from Facebook, not Instagram this time. And that person is Eric. Uh -huh. What? Okay. Can I cool. do one of my uh, my amigos things? Okay, do it. Is, Ad lib. Uh, uh, no, it's no, it's Wait. it's like that. It's not. It's like you sound like a bird you when you sound did yours. Like something else. But anyway, make the announcement. Okay, who's the winner, baby? So the winner is Eric Dobbins. Eric, Eric Dobbins, Dobbins, you are the winner. Yay. You have yourself a fresh. Uh, J Prince book, man. And let me tell you, you something. Do. You are going to be in for something if you're about the, that life. And what I mean by about that life is about being about business, establishing yourself in business, recreating yourself, coming from the bottom to the top. And um, that's what he teaches you how to do from A to Z. He showed you the blueprint, what he did, how he literally kicked in some doors. Yep. <laughs> literally, though, kicked in some doors. Like one of the stories that I love, I'm going to tell you all a couple of my J Prince. We talk J Prince now. Um, so one of the stories that he talked to me about was when he had to go see Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> so I asked him about the situation, and he didn't elaborate too much, but what he said was he had been ringing Floyd's phone, ringing Floyd's phone, ringing Floyd's phone. Floyd Mayweather didn't answer the phone because he owed him $600,000. So Floyd said, the hell with Jay Prince. I don't, I don't get it. So I'm ad-libbing too. So Jay Prince was like, okay. Just getting out of hand. <laughs> I'm going to have to fly to Las Vegas. <laughs> you probably don't want him to fly where you are, unless it's for an interview. I'm just, I'm just saying. Right. So he flew to Vegas, 
and he showed up at the camp of Floyd Mayweather, right? Floyd Mayweather was training, and his camp wasn't happy to see Mr. J. Prince, of course, because I'm thinking they familiar with the bag that he owed. Well, long story short, it was a tussle, allegedly, <laughs> in the, in the, in, um, the next day the $600,000 was paid. That's, that's all I got to say about it. So anyway, Floyd, May Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather made sure he got that bag to him. A sippy. A it's a shame he had to come all the way to Vegas and, and, uh, and make a guest appearance just to get his money. But if Mr. James Prince shows you a visit, it probably won't be good for you. It's not, it's not going to be what you're looking for. <laughs> so <laughs> let's just say it like that. That's right. So um, on another note, though, this is a humble guy that loves the Lord that I was so pleased to sit down with and talk to because he enlightened me on so many things. So, yeah, gangsters can love God and be God-based and um, have a spiritual balance. And that's what he was talking about to me. And that's what – so my interview was a little different than most people's interviews because of the spirituality that he showed me off camera. And plus I had read the book and I knew his spiritual side. So, for instance, we talked about his sister – who was killed by a train, mm. uh, I think at 11, I want to say. She was mm -hmm. hit by a train, and, yep. and her body was severed yep. into many pieces. And um, he came down to the scene at like about nine. nine years old to mm -hmm. witness the situation. Mm -hmm. So I asked him on camera, how, how could you deal with such a situation at such a young age? And, of course, he said because his spirituality, his base in God, when he couldn't get to church, on Sunday with his mother, he would be sent on a bus to church by himself. He was nine years old and prior to that. And so he had a spiritual base. And so this is, this is a side of Jay Prince that a lot of people don't know. Um, most people see he's a gangster or ex-gangster, or if you could be an ex-gangster. Um, they see the strong hand that Jay Prince has. For instance, one time Stevie Francis' chain was snatched off in a concert Mm -hmm. And in 24 hours, Jay Prince had it in his hand like this. Because he say that's family. That's right. And so if you family, <laughs> you probably won't bring that damn chain back. And so the chain was back. Yep. Another time, Jay Prince was in the airport. And um, he had on a $75,000 Audemars Pujat watch. And the watch came up missing off the belt. That's not good. So when it came missing off the belt, the, the long or the short is before he got out of that airport, the watch was returned, and he gave the young man $500,000 for finding the watch. <laughs> yeah. The watch got back. He didn't even get on the plane. So um, I could tell you a bunch of stories about power. This man owns an island. This man owns several homes in many, many cities. This man has made sure his family was well taken care of, well over. Everyone has homes, cars, the whole nine, and are well established in him. And so um, he, he instills strong family value. So because you do things on the wrong side of the tracks doesn't always mean you some evil, villain, crazy person. Sometimes you have desperate situations, such as uh, myself and the James Prince, uh, coming out of Fifth Ward. Shout out to everybody, Fifth Ward, the whole Houston and so sometimes you find yourself in those type of situations where it's do or die and you have to make a way. Yeah. And so he made a way. He put it on his back. I'm not saying that what he did was proper. I'm not here to condone the way. But what I'm condoning is that he did make a way. And out of no way, he produced a whole company, a record company. Uh, he sells cattle. He, he has a ranch. He has a thousand acre ranch where he sells cattle. Uh, also, he, I'm sorry, beef. And he also sells hay. He said he makes 200 plus thousand a year just selling hay. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a bag. Yeah. See, this man is educated in financing. He reads books like Rich Dad, Poor Dad. He reads, I'm sorry. He reads books like Napoleon Hill's uh, Think and Grow Rich. Make sure if you haven't read it, if you're trying to get a bag, you might want to read it. If you don't want to read, go on YouTube and pull up the Audible, but get that book. Yeah, get um, the book. Learn the book. Yep. And so I say that to say, that's James Prince. Without further ado, it's time for us to get into this interview. You want to do a commercial? So um, we'll go to a commercial break, and we'll be right back. Spotlight. 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 
In 1990, Washington, D.C. saw more than 470 homicides, earning it the label murder capital of the U.S. Shit, there you go right there. Hey, listen, when y'all pull over to the side, I'm gonna go in here and rush this dude. When y'all see me rushing, y'all rush in about 30 seconds. Give me about 30 seconds and rush the door. He ain't gonna know what hit him. What's up with you, man? How you feel, man? What's going on with you, man? Man, man, man. I gotta tell you about this meet, my nigga. Oh, yeah, I gotta yeah, go. I don't know yet. I'm trying to see. I went and talked with Diamonds the other day, man. I don't know, man. They been on their funny. I can't, I can't really say. Uh -huh. But I got a funny feeling that these dudes are feeling that means, man. So, you already know what it is. Wait for Black to get in there, give us the signal. Run up in the junk, snatch this nigga up, get this bread, spares out. Hey Joe, get this nigga this money, man. Else he's gonna kill you. I don't got no. I'm, I'm gonna take you to some money. Just let me up. All right, get your ass up. Come on. Get me up. Man. Let's go. Just get me up. I'm gonna take you to some money, man. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Spotlight Over the City. Welcome and without back. further ado, we're going to get right into this interview. <laughs> How you love that? So stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spotlight Over the City. And I'm here with the one and only, the big homie of all big homies, Mr. James Prince himself. What's going on, big homie? Oh, uh, yeah. What's up, D.C.? Hey, we love you, man. A lot of people have been worrying me to death about trying to get down here to get involved with the Mr. J Prince himself. So let's get into this interview a little bit. The first thing that I admire about you is your love for God. Yeah. And so when I read your book, I heard you say the driving force was mom and some a house and land. Yeah. And it took off from there. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that journey. Yeah, I mean, you know, ever since like the, the age of eight years old, I uh, I vowed as a kid that I would be the one to break the poverty curse where my family was concerned because as a kid I witnessed a lot of pain, you know what I mean? A lot of suffering, a lot of different things that, you know what I mean? My, my, my family crying, tears, lights being cut off, being kicked out of the home. It's a lot of poverty things that ghetto boys around the world can relate to. And as an eight year old, you know, I told my grandmother, I told my auntie, I told my uh, my mom, I'm gonna be the one. Don't worry about that, mama. I'm gonna do something about that. So, you know what I mean? I put that on my shoulders and I never looked back, you know, as I 
started my journey from that day forward, you know what I mean? And as I matured, it was something that I was willing to die for to break that poverty curse where my family was concerned. And you did just that. God has blessed you tremendously, but the thing that I love the most is you acknowledge it. It's not, a lot of people in your position don't acknowledge God. They got too big for God. And so tell me what keeps you grounded in God. Well, well, my foundation, you know what I mean, was, uh, you know, I wrote about in my book how even my mother didn't take me to church. She sent me to church on a, on a, on a bus, you know what I mean? And it was me sitting there listening to the Word of God at the age of 8, 9, 10 years old that ultimately saved my life, you know, in the midst of the jungle. Because, you know, when I think about it in retrospect, it wasn't because of my smarts. It wasn't because of me. You know what I mean? The Lord had me in the palm of his hand. He protected me in the midst of my ignorance. And, you know, that was the foundation of everything I built off of. And when I say you build a foundation, you have built more than a foundation. You have been the blueprint for many people like Master P, like Puffy, like all the music moguls that we see today. And so I salute you as the big homie, not just coming out of the streets, because I was coming out of the street myself. That's why I handed you that book, because you inspired me from a distance, right? I used to watch you, and I knew you was the blueprint. I said, I got to get to this dude. I just want to shake his hand and say, thank you for inspiring me, because you inspired me. So let me tell you, let me ask you, who inspired you? Since you the big Don and you the homie, who, who do you look at for inspiration? You know, I, I, it began with my mother, and, and my father, the man that played a role in my life into helping and shape and mold me into who I became today. You know what I mean? I had a, I had a great grandmother that lived to be 114 years old. Wow. Yeah, God, so. Yeah, you know what I mean? Wow. So, well, I don't know if you only give us 120. Yeah, well, the Bible tells us, the Bible says 120, you got to go. And, well, well what it, I, I think what it say three scores and, and 10 which is 70. That's what's kind of promised to us if we live upright. Right. Ain't no, you know, ain't no men that make it to that 120 number that I met or know. No, that's both in capital. Yeah. Your grandmother made it to 114. 14, man, and she shared a lot of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding with me. So my whole foundation of wisdom and role model began with, with those people. So one regret, if you had one regret, and, and I don't think you were a man of many regrets, but if you just had one regret, one move that you could have made different, what would it have been? Well, you know, in my book, I wrote about uh, one of my guys that was really close to me, got into a situation one night in a club and got arrested. And I was able to have a conversation with the police and get him out the back of that car and put him in my van to go home. And as he was leaving the parking hot lot, he drove across the street and went and got like half his head blew off. You know what I mean? So if there was one thing I could change, you know, as bad as I would hate to say this, but in order for him to live, I would have left him. He would have been in prison, but he would still be alive and have a chance for freedom. Just, just a ride to jail at night. Yeah, very unfortunate, but you can't save everybody. Sometimes God has a different plan, but I just want to say, like I say, your spiritual balance is what made me become balanced and made me leave the streets alone because I was locked and loaded and I was around. That's how I know a lot of people around here and that's how I established myself. It wasn't the positivity that I established, it was the negative, but I turned it into something, watching you as the blueprint. So I want to thank you for inspiring me and um, let's see. I have so many questions because I've read your book and um, I have two days. I read that book in two days. And man, um, when I read about your sister, I said he has a new angel. Yeah. So how did you handle that situation at a, as a so young? Because you were very young and that's very traumatic, very traumatic. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, once again, I think a lot of my situations was handled uh, wisely because of my spirituality. You know what I mean? It's, it's one thing about the truth where God is concerned, it don't matter if you're a babe or you're a thousand years old, that one truth is the same truth. And it'll carry you in the past, the present, and the future. And I was able to stand on that in the midst of a lot of stormy days, 
hurricanes and all of that, you know what I mean? And it was sufficient, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I give all credit to God, man. And that's who deserve it all. So before I get you out of here, I want to say one more thing. If you could talk to the young people today, because they seem to be extremely lost. This generation that I'm watching now, I'm 50, so I haven't seen this before, to be honest with you. What could you say to them, or what would you feel to say to them that would inspire them to do something different? Because they need change. Yeah, well, you know, first of all, when I look at the generation of the day, I understand that they didn't get this way by following people that wasn't perfect people you know what I mean so I understand that you know and I put myself in a position of they may have been following some of my uh, past ways you know what I mean and and I think it's important you know when we deal with the youth of the day to reveal that side of us where we wasn't perfect you know what I mean because when we come at them uh, with the sense of every move that they making is horrible and bad, then we not, you know, being real with them to the extent to share with them, man, I was here. You know what I mean? I wasn't always who I am today. You know what I mean? I was trying to run off the cliff, off the bridge. I was that person. But he is what made me transform. So we come at them, you know, uh, from a place of realness, we get, I know that we get their attention Yes, a little more that way versus, you know what I mean, criticizing and, and, and pointing at them all the time. So that's the first thing I would do. And then I would express the, uh, the importance of, uh, it's one thing to dream, then it's another thing of having a plan to accomplish that dream. Because, you know, we all have dreams and then we wake up empty handed. You know what I mean? We don't want to have them bedroom dreams. We want to have them dreams of establishing a plan, you know what I mean, to accomplish that in which you dream about. And I will go further in explaining them the importance of, 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 of buying the book, The Art and Science of Respect, so they can uh, read it by somebody who figured out how to turn nothing into something, you know what I mean? Because that should be a goal and an inspiration to all you know, with somebody they can identify with that was in their mind frame of where they at right now but figured out how to turn nothing into something, figured out how to transition from bondage to freedom. And that's what that's about, you know. So where can they get this book? Well, my book is on Amazon, you know, iTunes, uh, Tidal, uh, Apple. Yeah, you. it ain't hard to find right here in D.C. right now. So you guys make sure you go out and get this book because I've learned so many lessons. I, it took me two days. I read this whole book. And when I tell you it's so many lessons in here, one of the major things I learned is if you are in, on the other side of the fence right now, you haven't transitioned, have a purpose for what you're doing or you'll die in the street or go to prison. That's the one thing. And then make sure that you do it for somebody other than yourself is what this young man, this gentleman has taught me. Do it for somebody bigger than you, your family. Have a, a different purpose, not be selfish. I thank you for your time, big homie. This has been a, a real pleasure, man. And welcome to DC. And um, you guys stay tuned for Spotlight over the city, man. Oh, that's it and that's all. It's a wrap. Watch this. Man, welcome back to Spotlight of the City. So what do you guys think? Man. Clap it on one time for yes. the big homie Jay Prince. Yeah. I don't know that you guys know, but a lot of people don't get a chance at that. Like a lot of people, like the younger people may not even know who he is. So maybe I can kind of get you to relate a little bit. His son, Jazz Prince, discovered Drake and brought Drake to Lil Wayne. So maybe that pull you in to a mediocre part of who Jay Prince is. That wasn't even his play. As a matter of fact, he didn't even want Drake. He thought he was not that. So he was like, mm, I'm, I'm cool on Drake. And then his son kept pressing it and pressing it and pressing it and pressing it. And he ended up saying, well, I'll tell you what. I got a relationship with Cash Money. I'll call down there and plug him in. You go down there and give him to Wayne. And that's exactly how Wayne got Drake. And so that's why Jay Prince makes the calls pretty much on Drake. And that's where that Pusha T, Drake situation was dead was deaded instantly because he got a phone call from Mr. J. Prince and said, don't go back. He said, don't lay in a slot with pigs. 
And what he was saying was, he's going across the line with this hip hop thing, and he's getting personal. He's talking about people dying. He's talking about my family. He's talking about not his family, but Drake's family, his father, his homie that's sick, this and that. And it's crossing the line of hip hop and his opinion. And so what he was saying was, if he keep going, then I'm gonna step on the gas. <laughs> And so let's not do that. You haven't not heard another, Cause you're not another gonna, word. Because you're not going to mess my check up. That's right. And so you don't hear any more Drake push nope. a T beef because that's Mr. J. Prince. Another thing he said that was my favorite, and I'm going to leave you guys with this. He was talking about Takashi 69. They Takashi 69, I know the older heads. Like, who the hell is Takashi? Anyway, it's the little young rainbow head little guy that's making a whole bunch of money and a whole bunch of noise. With Treyway, I won't get into that. But anyway, he started making ill-advised decisions against uh, Mr. J. Prince's son, and a whole bunch of other situations occurred. Long story short, this is the statement he made. He said, if you campaign long enough, you will definitely get elected. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> so I don't have to explain <laughs> that. Sometimes what's understood don't have to be explained. So all I'm going to say again say is again. if you keep on campaigning long enough, you're going to get elected. Yeah. And so, <laughs> Lil Rainbow, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you call him, hey, Lil Rainbow? Yeah, that was the, and that <laughs> foolishness. So, all I'm simply saying is the respect level. It's a reason why the book is called The Art and Science of Respect. Because he commands it, demands it of all things. So, like myself. That's the one thing that you have to do. You don't have to like me. You don't have to like them. You better respect them. But em. you're going to have to respect it. You got to. So on that note, I will say this. This has been a really a good treat. My wife set this interview up. <laughs> um, she jumped through some hoops for me. Yes, I told I her that you that know, was my ultimate in interview is what I said. Yes, to you, right? he did. He told me, I don't know, when we first met, when we first, once he stalked me and got me and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. And we started dating. He, and you know, we get to know each other. And he told me that's the one person, because he's not, he don't really get into superstars and stuff like that. My husband is like, he's the superstar himself. So he don't really get into <laughs> celebrities like oh, that. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> but like he that. said, you know, one person that he would love to interview with Jay Prince. And I have to be honest, when he said that, I didn't really know who, the, who he was. I didn't know a lot about Rap A Lot Records. And so I didn't know a lot about him. So I went and looked him up and stuff. And so now, Three years later, fast forward, I never forgot what my husband said. And once I started being a part of this show and I started like diving into different things and meeting different people and networking, your network is your net worth. Know that. So you start meeting people and building relationships and well, voila. And look voila. at God. And so. Ain't it a song like that? And voila. Well, mm, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> So yeah, but um, I I yes. contribute that to God again, man. You know, That's spirit right. commands spirit. I That's say right. spirit commands spirit. I say spirit commands spirit. So I told her one day I'm gonna meet this guy, and interview this guy. Yes. But I'm gonna tell you something else right now. So keep this in mind. That's gonna be the big homie for a long time. I'm great plug in with Jay Prince. This is not a one time thing. The interview started it. But just know that we're gonna build a relationship. Right, because I got some That's big business right. that me and him getting ready to Put do, it and it's already in motion. And so I thank God in advance for it. So I tell you, he gonna, I'm gonna be family. So that means y'all can't play with me no more. <laughs> not, not that you ever. I could. just want to say before we go, though, <laughs> but I'm, it's dead. Before we go, because we do have to wrap it up and get out of here. I am super proud of you, honey. I'm proud of you, you too. You did such a great job. I was looking at that like, look at my bag. So we got to get out of here. Thank you, baby. I appreciate you, and I love you, and I really do appreciate the hard work that you put in to make things happen around here because you behind the scenes killing it but Thank um you, honey. i i just want to say i'm just really grateful you know what i'm saying oh like, reverend keone said real quick same before I, before we close um so anyway, we got to get out of here got another show coming up you guys so <laughs> one thing you always have to remember before I we always get out of here is just one thing i gotta say love hard live good god first spotlight love over the city feel. i put the spotlight on your city i put the spotlight on